In this video, you'll learn how to improve your woodworking just by using SketchUp. So a few reasons to use SketchUp is that you can visualize your projects before you build them, and then you can also make any adjustments, get the perfect measurements right here in this program before you start wasting wood in the real world. So in this first video, I'm going to just show you how to build this simple bench. This is basically just to get you to learn how to use the tools. I'm going to do a, a part two to this video, which will show you how to take a SketchUp project and turn it into printable plans. Now, unfortunately, that process does require the pro version of SketchUp, but building the projects and you know taking down your own measurements and all of that, you can do in the free version. So right now we're in the free version, so this video um, is for everybody. So let's go ahead and build this project. I'm just going to delete the project and start over. So notice um, before I do that, we've just got four components here. And uh, this is a simple bench that I actually built. Um, you can find that video on the channel. Um, and it's just made out of two by tens. So let's go ahead and delete it and start over. We're gonna start with the select tool. That's this little arrow right here. Now, all of these tools right here have a shortcut. So for the select tool, the shortcut is spacebar. I hit spacebar and it automatically gave me that tool. So I can click on each component and delete them. And so now I'm going to show you how to make that from scratch. So let's start with making the legs here. Like I mentioned, they are two by tens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the rectangle tool right here. Now the shortcut for the rectangle tool is R on your keyboard. So with this tool, all you have to do is click somewhere and move it around and it will create rectangles. And when you click again, it will lock that rectangle in. Now notice down here, it gives you dimensions for the rectangle you created. If we back up just a hair, and we click and start a rectangle, we can actually decide how big the rectangle is just by typing it in. So I'm gonna type in 1.5 comma 9.25. So for those of you that are familiar with two by tens, they are actually nine and a quarter. So I've made my rectangle one and a half by nine and a quarter. I'm going to hit enter. And so now we have the dimensions of a two by 10 right here. We've got one and a half by nine and a quarter. So we can actually measure that to verify. If you hit T, it will give you the tape measure tool. You can find that right here. And I can measure from here to here, and it says nine and a quarter. And so I can also measure from here to here, and it says one and a half. So now we want to add the third dimension to this, the height of the board. So the way that we do that is we hit P. That's the push-pull tool, and you'll find it right here. And so if we click on the surface, we can drag it up just like this. I'm gonna type in 20, so that's 20 inches. And now we have a two by 10, that is 20 inches tall. And so if we wanted to paint this object to look like wood, there's two ways to paint the entire thing. One is to go back before we pulled it up, just when we were right here. And if you hit the paint bucket, the shortcut for it is B, I know it should probably be P, right, for paint, but it's B. But if you go here to the search icon, it will probably start you uh, right here. Go to the search icon and you can go through materials and there's actually a wood section. So once you have one that you like, you just paint it on like this. And now if we hit P for the push pull tool, and we bring it up and type in 20 like we did before, all of the sides of the two by 10 are painted with that sort of wood look. So the other way to do it is to simply triple click on the object and then hit B for the paint tool and paint it that way. So if you forget to do it and you've already built an object, you can still paint it after the fact by triple clicking it. And so the next thing I'm going to do is make a little uh, dado right here. If you notice the, the bottom tier of that bench was recessed into the legs, we're gonna do that real quick and then we're going to make this a component and we'll get to that in a second. So let's take our tape measure. T is the tape measure tool. We're gonna to start at the bottom here and just pull a line up. I'm gonna type in 8.5, which gives us eight and a half inches, and that gave us a guideline here. Now I'm gonna pull one more line up, and I'm gonna type in 10 inches. So I'm going to trace these lines with the line tool. You can find it right here, or you can hit L on your keyboard, and we're just gonna trace these lines. Okay, we've got that one. 
just clicking on the corner here, going end to end. So now we've traced those lines. If I hit E, it will give me the eraser tool, which you can find right here. We can erase those guidelines. And now we still have our lines. So I'm gonna recess this in a half an inch. So we can use that push pull tool that you've already seen, which is P on your keyboard. So just start pushing it this way. It doesn't have to be perfect. Once you're in the direction you wanna go, you can let off and just type the distance you want. 0.5, enter. So it is a half inch depth right there. So let's zoom out a little bit. And this is the two by 10 with the notch cut out. Now, one thing I may not have mentioned is when you orbit around something, it is the O key on the keyboard. And you'll find that right here. And that allows you to turn and orbit around. And of course, you'll use your mouse or trackpad to scroll in and out like that. So that allows you to kind of move around anywhere you want and you'll get used to navigating. It might feel weird at first, but after using SketchUp for a while, I don't even think about it. I just move around like that. So now we've got our first leg. Now, instead of building the second leg, we can copy this one. The only thing is we're going to have to flip it 180 degrees so that the notch is facing on the other side. So let's first make a copy. I'll show you how to do that. Um, what we're going to do is make this a component so that it can't be altered or messed up when other pie pieces touch it, right? So if I hit, uh, if I triple click it three times, one, two, three, it will select the whole thing. If you only click it once, it will select a face. If you click it twice, it will select the face and the edges that touch that face. Three times will give you everything that is touching this component here or object. So we're gonna make it a component by right clicking or control click, go to make component and we'll call this leg. So now we've got a component and um, it's all one piece. That's what we want. So the best way to make a copy, uh, you can hit command C for copy, command V for paste, just like um, you're doing that with text or it would be control C, control V on Windows. A better way to do it is to use the move tool. So this is the move tool right here. If you hit M, you'll find it on your keyboard. And this allows you to move things around. Now we don't wanna actually move this piece. We wanna move a copy. So if I hit Alt uh, Option, it's Alt or Option on Mac, it adds this plus sign right here. Now I think you hit Control on Windows to bring that up, but we're gonna move a copy now. So if I move it along this axis here, see how I can move it anywhere, but it will snap to this axis. That's what I wanna do. I'm gonna move this out. I'll just put 24 inches for now. It actually is going to go further, but um, we've gotta flip it around. So the way that you rotate an object is with the rotate tool right here, and the shortcut for it is Q on your keyboard. And so notice it kind of goes between the red plane, the blue plane, and green plane. We want to snap it to the blue one. And the way that we can do that is just hit the up arrow key on our keyboard. If we hit the left arrow key, it goes green, right arrow key red, up arrow key blue. So let's rotate it on the blue axis. So I clicked on one corner. I'm going to click on another corner. Now I can just bring it around. I can type in 180. Enter, and so now I need to move it back this way. Notice this edge is touching where this edge should be. So I know it's nine and a quarter inches away. So I'll take the move tool, just move it that direction, type in 9.25, enter. So now we've got both of our legs here. Now I actually need them to be, let's see, 42 inches apart from end to end. So let me take my tape measure here. And I can see that it is only, let's see, 27 inches apart. So one way we can make sure we have the right distance is we can create a line and delete it later. Because these are components, remember we right clicked it, made it a component. Any lines we draw on it won't mess them up. We can just delete them without deleting the object. So if I click here and I type in 42, I know this is how far I need to move this. So I'm gonna hit M for the move tool. I'm gonna move this right here, boom. Okay, now I can hit E for the eraser tool and erase this line. So we've got our two legs. Now, a very fast way to create the board that's gonna go here is to, just, is to just take the rectangle tool, start in this corner here, end in this corner down here, so diagonal, and now we can turn that into our two by 10. So what we can do is hit P for the push-pull tool, 
pull this nine and a quarter inch, so 9.25, enter. And then I forgot to paint it, so you can triple click the object, hit B for the paint tool, and just paint it once and it will paint every side. And so now let's make that a component. We're gonna right click it. Now remember, it has to be triple clicked, and it is when it's all blue like that. So triple click, right click, or control click on Mac. Make component, we'll call it bottom shelf. Okay, so now we've got the bottom shelf here, and we're going to create a top shelf for it, or a top sort of seat. So this is like a shoe bench. Um, I'm gonna hit L for the line tool, and one way I can do this, I know I want it to overhang three inches. So I can start over here and just come out three inches. And remember, if your line's going off here, you can hit the left arrow key, up arrow key, or right arrow key to uh, bring it on an axis. We're gonna go with the red axis, which is the right arrow key. I'm gonna type in three and hit enter. So now we have a line that's three inches. So if it overhangs here three inches and over here three inches, it's gonna be 48 inches total. And so now we've got that line. Now I'll just keep drawing the lines here. We could use a rectangle. There's many ways to do this. L for the line tool. I'm going to bring a line out here, 9.25. Bring one this way, 48 inches. And just connect them like that. And so it looks a little crazy when um, multiple pieces are overlapping like that. But what we're going to do is hit P for the push-pull tool and bring this up 1.5. That's the thickness of our 2 by 10 And again, we're going to triple click on it, hit B for the paint tool, and paint it. So now all we have to do is right-click this and make it a component. We're going to call it top. And there we are. We have our bench. So that is the basics of SketchUp for woodworkers. There are many other tools that I did not use in this project, but I wanted to make the very first video very simple. So we're gonna leave on this one. Be sure to check out part two, and I'll show you how to take this bench out of the free version. And again, we'll have to go into the pro version to create our printable PDF plans with measurements and dimensions on the page. I'm gonna show you how to make that um, but we're going to have to export this out of the free version into the pro. So check out the part two if you're interested in that. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.